Now, we've all heard zero down, low monthly payments, and technically get off the grid. We'll have the perfect person for you today where he's gonna be educating us on everything that we need to know to go solar and take our first steps to energy independence. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Adam from Bison Roofing and Solar. The perfect perspective is the fact that right now, everyone is just renting power. You don't own your own power, but by becoming energy independent, by going solar, you, know, you own your power and ultimately get to the point where hopefully you're even, even selling power back to FPNL. Yeah, and, and I don't blame people for being skeptical. I mean, I had my roofing company for 10 years before I even thought of what a solar panel was. And once I became intrigued with it and I started learning that this could happen, I put them on my house. Right. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe it because my average bill with FPL was $282. And I had been paying that for my first 10 years of home ownership. And I look back at that like, whoa, that's a lot of money. And uh, I'm not even 40 years old. I'm turning 40 this year. And uh, I'm, I'm done not only paying FPL for the rest of my adult life, but I've already met my return on investment. That's so incredible. Right and obviously it says a lot, the fact that, you know, you have it on your own home. I mean, that's living proof. It's not just that, you know, you're, you're installing a product, but you have it. And I believe you even said you have a $9 a month electrical bill. That's incredible. Yeah. So what, what I like to do is share with customers exactly what my bill looks like, you know, in those different months, because many months I actually overproduce and then FPL right. carries those credits over to the next month. So a lot of times in July or August, I would normally have maybe a $400 bill, but, and even if I'm using more than I'm producing because of the, the storms and all the air conditioning use, I'm still taking all of the reserves that I had from January, February, March, and those are helping pay my bill so that in a 365 day year, I'm not zero, you know, and, and that's, right. that's what we want to do for people. And uh, as FPL raises their rates, uh, as, you know, we continue down the path that we're continuing, um, you know, it can be a little scary sometimes seeing that your $200 bill today could be 230, could be 240. And right. again, that's rent. So right. anyone who owns their home has made that conscious choice. And I think that if people looked at this as rent versus ownership, uh, you know, a lot more people would, would have solar. But I think uh, it just takes that time and education and, and talk to, uh, to get to that point. Absolutely. And just talking about FP&L, um, how do the rates work? I mean, is it just normal rates or is it less? Do they, you know, how does it work when they buy back electric, say, if you do have a surplus? Okay, so that, that's a great question. So basically, we don't have tiered rates here. We just have one flat rate 24 hours a day. So what happens is, is when you put the solar system on the house, we're going to make you 24 hours worth of power in about five or six hours. So there's no batteries or anything like that. What happens is we connect right to their grid. So all the excess power that you make at like noon or one o'clock when the sun is really shining, your house couldn't even use all that power if you had every appliance on. So the power just goes right back to the grid and they give you a meter. So that meter will actually click both ways instead of the one you have right now that only clicks the bad way. So there's many months where I would actually produce way more power than I would use, and they just make sure that they meter that and track it. So basically every 30 days, they just freeze the meter, and if you have an overage, they let you carry that to next month, and if you're a little bit short, then you would receive a bill. What do we need to know when, when looking into you know, getting a new solar system for our homes? I mean, are there certain tips or anything in particular that you would say is most crucial that we should know when researching, you know, whether it's a different type of panels or installation or you know, even you know, if I have an older home, my roof is older. I mean, should I be installing solar? You know, I mean, no, what are no, those these are all. These are all great questions, and, and every piece of, of what we do today is, is from our own experiences. The main things to think about, obviously look at the company who's doing it, you know, see if they're using their own people or, or subcontractors, if they're just a sales organization or just an install organization. Very rarely in the solar industry does one company sort of do it all in-house, and that's going to be really key for you as the customer down the road if there's a problem, because all solar estimates are based upon accountability and reliability. So if the system is down for one month out of the year or people aren't answering your calls, uh, that's going to take all your financial projections and not be that good. This, it may end up costing you money to go solar. So, you know, you want to make sure that all those things are, are checked off. And um, to, to your point too, a lot of people look up panel brand names, you know, because we're sort of really ingrained in brand names as we should be. But if you look at the things that are important to you in life, like a, like a car or a, a, an appliance that you use every day, of course you want brand names because there's moving parts. You know, the, those are things that can potentially fail. So you'd want something that, you know, really works. With solar, the panels don't move at all. They don't have any oil or gears or changing parts or anything. So they just kind of sit there up in the sun. So sometimes what people do is they'll, 
they fixate it on a, a brand of panel and sort of overpay for a system when what really matters is the inverter. So solar makes DC power and we need AC power. So that little transfer there, that's always where there's trouble. So if we ever go to any system to service it, it's always right to the inverter, never the panels. So as long as you can make sure that you have a, a quality company installing it who has all the qualifications and that your inverter or micro inverters are the best possible option on the market, then you know that your system is going to be accountable and reliable regardless of solar panel. And, and the last thing that I'll say is on my roof, I have 260 watt panels from a business that's a company that's been out of business for four years. Right. Th these would be considered garage sale quality by today's standards, but I still don't have a bill. So if a, if a panel has higher wattage or lower wattage, all that really means is you'll need one or two or three more or less of them. It's kind of like saying I have 520s or a $100 bill. You still have $100. Right, that's right. how electricity works. We would just like to make that clear because we want to find the bell curve where you see value. We don't want to put Ferraris on your roof and have 100 years to pay it back. And we don't want to put crap on your roof either that's going to fail on you. So we have to find that level of quality that's going to work for you so you get strong quality with return on investment. Absolutely. So you would say, obviously, inverter is the number one most important item that's being installed on the project. But um, what are most of the panels made out of? I mean, are they um, PVC or are they, um, you know, obviously they're probably, they have an aluminum base, but tell me a little bit more about what I should know about the, the construction of the panel. Um, so um, what, what's key about a panel, and, and here in the high velocity hurricane zone, we can only use about 5% of the panels available globally anyway. Okay. So any panels that are put in a wind test and kind of flex, we can't use those because they could go flying, you know, and that's a big, big deal and we're all worried about hurricanes. Um, so yeah, this is an anodized aluminum around the outside. Uh, the glass on top is a tempered glass. And then what matters too is uh, the cell itself could be monocrystalline or polycrystalline. And um, yeah, kind of something I say to create a nice visual is if we all made Christmas cookies, you know, with our grandmother or something a long time ago, that first batch is always perfect, right? And then you take the scraps and you roll them back up to make more cookies and then they're almost perfect. Right. So those first ones are kind of like your poly cells. Those are ones that have never been used. Uh, they use those for computer processors and other high tech, you know, uh, items. And the poly cells are a little bit cheaper. They end up looking like blue and sometimes have silver frames. A lot of times if you see those, they don't do as well uh, in long term production. And again, if you're losing the production that you were promised, that's going to be a problem. So we like to be upfront about that, that we only use monocrystalline uh, black on black panels. Absolutely. Sense. And just to kind of take away the fears, obviously being in a hurricane zone here in South Florida, um, you know, they are certified, hurricane certified, you know, there's some type of protection plan on that insurance. Yeah, well, and, and there's, there's another aspect too, is the racking. See, the, the racking is actually what you don't see, but that's what attaches the panels to your roof. Okay. So we've actually adopted a proprietary racking system that doesn't uh, require us to drill and wonder if we're hitting a truss. So usually when there's leaks associated with solar, it's from companies who use a cheaper rail system because they have to drill a bunch of times before they find your truss and then sort of hope that it's center stud. With ours, we don't have to, so there's never going to be any missed holes. Wow. And uh, we only use licensed roofers right. to be you know, solar installers because they understand and respect the roof to make sure that you know, you're not making additional holes, cracking tiles, and creating damage. Because if you do that, then what's the point? Now, now you're shortening the life and you're going to have to take the solar panels off and replace the roof a lot sooner than you would. So um, is it difficult yeah. to get solar in if someone lives in a community that where there is an HOA? So what's kind of surprising, I mean, Florida is not the solar friendliest state, but there is uh, there is a law that actually says that um, HOAs or really anyone else cannot stop you from going solar. So what we typically do is we'll fill out the application, give them our insurance, license, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll just kind of attach the law to it just to let them know, hey, listen, you know, <laughs> If, if you want to say, hey, please don't put them on the front, could you put them on the side, and the customer is okay with that, and they don't lose production, we're happy to work with them. I mean, the majority of our systems are in backyards and not visible anyway. Right. But if you have a south-facing front door and a big roof line and you want solar, um, that's the best place to put it. You, you know what I mean? So they really can't say no, but we try to be friendly with them because the last thing you want is to be at odds with your HOA. Right. You know, well, as long as there's a, a little human touch on things. Uh, they should understand and the panels that we install are all black on black, you know They're not the checkerboard ones anymore and they they look really nice and more and more people are, are having them put on the front to sort of Tell the world. Hey, no emissions from this house, right? You know, <laughs> that's, that's a that's carbon a footprint, you know, we're saving money and I think uh, People become really passionate about this because right. it is it's a leap of faith You know, you have to trust that it'll work, but uh, 
when they do and you get that $9 bill, I'm telling you, it is just an awesome feeling, especially right now when money's tight and you're kind of worried about bills. Um, it's definitely nice to know that I've, I've checked that box. You know, how long does it take to get that ROI? Is it, is it just the few initial months that you mentioned before? Is that well, so, so basically, um, if you were to buy a system cash, it's warranted for 25 years. Okay. Uh, and we've seen ROIs as low as six years and about as high as eight or nine, just depending on, you know, what angle your okay. roof is and how many panels we can get, energy efficiency, all that stuff. So, um, but at that point, all the way through the rest of the 25 and beyond, you're completely done. But right. what a lot of people do, and this to me is smart, you finance the system for, for zero down, right? And you usually have a year, maybe two years before you have to pay. But we fix your payment so that it's a lot lower than FPL. So then you're not really deliquifying, your, you're not writing any checks, you're not making any big purchases, and you're doing the same thing that you would have been doing, except at the end of the year, you've saved $800,000 and the money that you're spending is towards a mortgage instead of rent. Right. You know, and someday when you own that and people sell their homes, you get a huge premium when you do sell the house because obviously it comes along with a single digit electric bill and, you know, the comps usually have a lot larger. And, and, and just kind of thinking about one other thing, because I have read, you know, some different um, articles and things out there. Are batteries needed at all for this system or is it, you know, no batteries, no nothing? It's just plug and play once it's installed. So you, you have the option to add batteries and really the only time that you would would be in a power outage. But what we found right now is the battery technology really isn't that great to power your entire home as a standby, you know, like a generator almost. Just because when we lose power, it's typically from a hurricane in the summer and, you know, you need air conditioning, which takes a lot of power and a lot of juice to run. So we typically don't install batteries. We just use the grid tied system. Right. And uh, right now we found the generators make more sense in that sort of situation. However, with each and every week and month, we're getting closer and closer to a, a standby battery solution that can actually create an island with your home so you wouldn't be connected to the grid. Um, but we just wanna make sure that the cost is right. We wanna make sure that people don't have to worry about radiation or any issues. We wanna understand if we can install them inside, outside, if there should be fans. So I'll right. probably put them on my house or another house first, run them hard, test them, and just make sure that you're not gonna be a victim of being our guinea pig. You know, Absolutely. we wanna make sure that even though the books say that they're right, when I read these spec sheets, believe me, you would hate me. If I put $20,000 worth of batteries on your house, you'd be out of power at 9 p.m. wanting to punch me in the face. So right. <laughs> I, I want to have happy customers as much as I can. I'm in an industry where uh, it's tough to make people happy sometimes doing roofing right. and things like that. But, um, you know, we have some great reviews and we want to keep that going. So when I find a battery solution that makes sense for us here in South Florida, right. believe me, everyone will know about it. And uh, you'll see value that we can stand by and guarantee. So that's what I want to do. And, you know, we've discussed a ton about you know solar and, and really what it takes to add solar but all the qualities and things like that that we should be looking for is there anything that we haven't touched on today that you feel is just so important that you, you'd like to add and um, just bring up yeah well the biggest thing that, that i would say to anybody even considering this is go to your fpl and look what you've spent in the last year or even 10 years all right and just look at the amount of money right. and just say hey listen if i had the opportunity to not make that mistake again over the next 10 years and I wanted to completely drink that. Look into solar, and, and don't look at uh, you know the fancy proposals and get you know taken away by big numbers and everything. Look at what the system is going to produce, and what you're paying now, and what it costs you to get there. Because kilowatt hours are a commodity. It's just like gasoline. You know, if you can get gas for a dollar fifty at one place or two dollars at another, you're probably going to go to the place where it's a dollar fifty. So we've shown people kilowatt hours that cost less than ten cents, and you're paying thirteen right now with FPL, but that's thousands of them every single month. So that adds up really, really quickly. So all I would say is, is just do a comparative analysis as to what you're doing right now with renting electricity and what you're doing, what you could be doing with producing your own and having your own system. And then obviously looking to the future with, uh, with rates raising, remember FPL is your partner in this. They give right. you full retail rates. So if, if the kilowatt hour jumped, all that would mean is, you're going to get return on investment faster. And now you're selling a commodity for higher than it costs you to make it. So I think if people break down all of the rumors and all of the stuff, and you just look at the bare facts of, Hey, this is what this will make me. This is what it will cost. This is what I'm spending. I think that nine out of 10 people would say, I can't afford not to do this. But again, you have to look at the whole picture whether or not you can afford to just do this at once or if you wanted to utilize some kind of financing. But at the end of the day, it's just the reallocation of the money you're spending on rent. And any homeowner has already made that decision. 
And the only thing that I'll say is, you know, as someone who bought a house as a 30 year mortgage on a 5% interest rate, after the first year of payments, I own what the, the toilet seat uh, you know, maybe the door handle, it was nothing, but at least I was on my way to something, right. you know, and now that I'm 10 years into it and I refi down to a 10 year and I'm getting closer and closer, I'm seeing how important it is to have a nest egg. And as we're all looking at retirement, I just think it's really, really smart to start taking some of these variable expenses, making them fixed and getting rid of them so that we can all have a, a better, brighter future. And just last year with my small little subsect of customers, uh, we saved $650,000 that would have gone to FPL over like 400 customers. That, that, I mean, that stat is absolutely incredible. And, you know, we've gone over so much today. I mean, I know as far as personally for myself, I'm one step further to getting to that point of wanting to be, you know, energy independent. Um, you know, obviously for everyone that has more questions or they want to look into it more, I know your website is uh, bisonroofing.com, but if somebody wants to get in direct touch with you, I mean, is there a best email or contact number that you can tell everyone? Yeah, um, really, my, my email is just Adam at Bison Roofing and Solar. All of our team members, it's just our first name at the company. You can do info, call us, uh, Facebook, Messenger, whatever you want to do. I also host a radio show live every week on Sundays. Um, that's on iHeartRadio. So uh, there's a lot of ways to get a hold of us. But listen, there are no stupid questions. Ask a million of them and, and understand that if someone's not willing to give you their time and to answer your questions, then how's it going to be when you're asking them for service in, in three years? You know, so please feel everybody out, get the numbers right, ask questions, verify. And uh, I think you'll see that this is a very valuable proposition. Absolutely. Uh, well, Adam, I, I really want to thank you for joining me today. You know, uh, you know, you heard it straight from Adam, you know, it's true, zero down, you're going to significantly reduce your payments right away. But you know, get on the road to being financial or um, energy independent. And again, you know, visit Adam at bisonroofing.com and join him and his team, ask a question, um, but start looking at it. And again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today for At Home with the Show. Check us out on um, uh, homeshows.net and also on our Facebook page at Florida Home Show and Instagram at FL Home Shows. Again, thanks again for joining us, Adam. I appreciate it. And until next thank time, you. At Home with the Home Show. The home